let's work through a little bit about how projection operators relate to measurement. Now measurement is fundamentally what we're always interested in in quantum mechanics, but now we're usually just talking about some math, and so it's helpful to always remember we're thinking about measurement. So when we're measuring our spin one-half system, we ask questions such as, when I measure the spin, what is the value I get? And the answer for a spin one-half system is plus h bar over 2, spin up we call that, or minus h bar over 2, spin down. We then can say, what's the probability, given an initial state, that I measure one value or the other? We've talked about that in a separate video. But now there's this idea of collapsing the wave function. And the spin simulation explores this a little bit, that if you start with a state that's, for instance, spin up an x, and you pass it through a z-analyzer, you get 50% spin up in z, 50% spin down in z as your probability for each individual measurement. But then if we take the particles that have gone through spin up, basically coming out that side, and we pass them back to a spin x analyzer, it becomes 50-50. Somehow we have changed that initial state. And so the changing of the state that results from individual measurements or subsequent measurements is what we can use the projection operator for. So one thing to keep in mind is that we've already had capital P for probability, and now we have capital P for projection. Uh, one helpful thing to do is use kind of uh, serif, if you will, capital P for projection, and then kind of curly P, you know, with a swoopy upper bit um, for probability. And so on a good day, that's what my notation looks like. I think that matches the book. And it's really helpful for you to just remember what this is in your notes and to make your work really clear. So let's think about what happens for some general quantum state. And I've already implicitly said it's normalized. This choice of A and B is already normalized. And I've explicitly said there's some complex phase on the second term. Obviously, sometimes that's not true and B is real, but let's work with it this way. So what happens if I apply my projection operator, up and I tried to make that too swoopy, um, for spin up to psi? And so this is basically saying, you know, I had some incoming beam, which is my psi, then this has gone through my z um, analyzer, and my spin up is my subsequent um, thing. So here we kind of just had some count, and here we're going to call this psi prime. We have a new state, and we're going to pass that on to something else. So this is kind of a, a picture representing what that, that spin simulation would be. So. There's two ways we can do this. We can explicitly write this out in the matrix notation, or we can just leave it and work in bras and cats. That's fine, too. So if we leave it in the cat notation, we see that that projection operator, and I'll write it out with some parentheses, because this starts to get really uh, headache-inducing at a certain point. right? That's what this operator is. And remember that in matrix notation, that was just this. And now we're applying it to our, our state. So A spin up plus B e to the i phi spin down. And so when we do that, we see that we're going to get, and I'll, I'll write this out completely, we're going to take this bra, and this is going to be distributed along with that ket to the left of it. Do not swap kets and bras. That's like swapping rows and columns. You get a different object. So you have to keep it in the right order. And so my first object is spin up ket, and then I'll say, and I can move this scalar. I can just move these scalars over to the right. You could have moved them over to the left. But so I have this object, and now I'm applying here. Right now I have that spin up ket, and then A just on the outside to put it somewhere. My second object here is again spin up ket, spin up bra, spin down bra, B, E to the I phi. So we have been, go back to our orthonormality rules. This is 1. This is 0. So this term is going to drop out. So when we applied our projection operator in the spin-up direction to psi, what we're left with is actually just A spin-up. Now, we can't call that psi prime because it's not normalized, right? It wasn't that a was equal to 1. It was that a plus b was 
uh, sorry, the magnitude of a squared plus the magnitude of b squared was equal to 1. So we actually have to renormalize this. And so we can say that psi prime is going to be equal to basically our normalized projection operator. So projection in this case of spin up because that's the situation I had, psi. And then you just really have to renormalize it. And this is where it gets a little bit, the equation looks confusing. If you just have in your mind, I have to renormalize this, it will work out. But it's the square root because that normalization is always kind of squaring. Um, psi projection operator, psi. Now, you might say, what's the point of this? If I passed it through spin up, I know I have spin up. Well, what is really helpful here is the idea that we can start projecting into different bases. So for instance, I could have been working with a complicated state expressed in the z basis, and I could have expressed a projection operator in the z basis, but for spin in the x direction, and then understanding what your state is is a little more complicated. And again, you might just say, well, it would just still be just spin up or down in x. That's true. But this is a way of mathematically working with it. And again, understanding this is mathematically what we're going to do when we talk about collapsing the wave function.